Hello, welcome to the second video about the hyperbolic trig functions. Um, the first video went over what all the functions are and the derivatives of uh, sine hyperbolic and hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic tangent. This That video, I wanted to stop it right there. Um, there's two more slides I wanted to cover though, and so that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, it's all about the background, like why are they called hyperbolic and why should we care about them? Where are they used? And so let's tackle the hyperbolic question. So what? Why are they called hyperbolic and trig? Like what, what is this? So let's just go back to regular trig. It's based off of having uh, the unit circle and you can parameterize the unit circle by letting X be cosine T and Y be sine T. You travel along the unit circle and um, T would go from uh, zero to two pi. Okay. And so, the hyperbolic trig functions are related to this. Sorry, it keeps my ring light. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's gone. Okay. Hopefully, I can edit that out. <laughs> the hyperbolic trig functions are related to this. So let's see how. All right. So, a hyperbola has the generic equation um, with. Uh, a minus the same guy right x squared minus y squared is equal to one okay the red branches there they are the hyperbola these other lines are just asymptotes and the box there is just drawn in to help you draw the shape um, asymptotically you can approach y equals x and y equals negative x and you can parameterize the unit hyperbola by using hyperbolic trig Okay, you will let x be hyperbolic cosine and let y be hyperbolic sine. And you'll travel along one of the branches of the hyperbola. Okay, and there are no restrictions on t. t can be anything from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, now, um, so as a technicality, we have the fact that, remember, hyperbolic cosine was um, the formula e to the, well in this case, e to the t plus e to the minus t all over two. That'll never be zero. Remember the graph, it was the lowest point was when it was one. And so because of that, then the x value here in this parameterization is always one or bigger. And so that's why we only have the right, the right branch. Okay, we can only, when we, we parameterize in this manner, we're only tra traversing the right branch of the uh, hyperbola. So x squared plus y squared. And remember the equation, right? x squared minus y squared. The hyperbolic cosine squared minus the hyperbolic sine squared is equal to 1, while the sine squared plus the cosine squared is equal to 1, or another way around. Yeah? All right, great. So that tackles the why is it called hyperbolic. All right, great. Why do we care? <laughs> Where in the world... Is this ever used? Um, if you ever travel along the road and you see the hanging cables, okay, telephone cables, you know, uh, in, so cable, um, that's that the 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 the, uh, the sort of hanging cable from court between between two poles. The natural hang of the cable is actually it, it, it follows this law here, and it actually ends up um, in the hyperbolic cosine function. Okay. And so um, there's the height and the weight, and the way it hangs in its natural hanging um, state is, is following the hyperbolic cosine function. It's called a catenary, or like a chain curve. And um, it's not the only place this thing is used, but that's um, one of the main applications. But definitely uh, in physics, there's this um, there's this equation that is is governed by partial derivatives. So we've seen derivatives. Um, we haven't seen equations yet with derivatives. But when you go to multivariable calculus, you'll have multivariable derivatives. And then a famous equation of multivariable derivatives is called Laplace's equation, where you take the x double derivative, the x derivative with respect, derivative with respect to x, and then again, 
and you add that to the derivative with respect to y, and then again, those two are basically opposite signs when this equation is true. So when you add them up, you get zero. It's called Laplace's equation, and um, common common solutions to this is the hyperbolic trig functions, and it's used in all these areas here, just a few. Okay, so yeah, I didn't want to make the last video too long, so I just uh, had these two slides just giving you some background, like why do you care, and what is it, like why the word hyperbolic? How does it tie to trig? Why is it hyperbolic trig? So hopefully I've at least given you some background, and now you can go and take the derivative of the other three, um, and you can then use that in problems with the chain rule. Thank you for watching. My name is Akai Rimmer, and I'll um, see you in the next video. Take care.